Hello friends, today's video is about my joystick that snaps onto your Xbox controller. It's got a stick and a throttle, and you put your hands on it, so it's a hands-on throttle and stick, so a hot ass. So this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know there's a lot of people out there who are playing this game with their regular game pads because they don't have a joystick controller to control the planes with. In fact, I think a lot of joysticks are sold out currently because this game is so popular right now. And they're quite expensive as well. So I thought I'd pitch in and roll my own with my 3D printer and uh, perhaps that could elevate or enhance your simulation experience. It's super simple to make with a 3D printer and I'll err on the side of caution when I say it'll be about 10 bucks and perhaps an afternoon of your time to make one of these. I'll put the files up for you to use, uh, throttly free. You can just go to your local library or your friend with a 3D printer and make one of these in just a day, you know. I'll upload the designs and show you how to make one. So as you can see, it latches onto your Xbox controller like this. So to build one of these yourself, just go out and print all these parts. They should all just about fit on one bed of a printer, so you'll be able to print them in one go. No supports are necessary. So you just take all these parts and click them together. You attach the base to your controller, then this shaft piece to your base. You snap these linkages together and and the stick holder goes here. You have to trust me, but the funny shape that they make, it ends up transmitting the geometry perfectly. If you want more centering force so that when you let go of it, it returns to the center like this. Or if you like to have you know, heavier control, what you can do is snake through this rubber band here through this special shape and it'll give you spring tension in two axes. Oh, and if you want a throttle to go with your game, you can print this second piece, which is even simpler. It uses the same ball joint, just click it together, and you have a throttle lever. You can really set how you want to play the game. You can just play it with your gamepad or even just the mouse. I mean, after all, flying a large airplane is more about the navigation and all the radio dials and switches more than it is about actually whacking the stick around. But there are certain situations like landings or flying in very tight quarters where you really want that precise control that comes with a flight stick. So the way it works is it's based on these ball joints, as you can see. It snaps together and you get a click. And these are what transmit the force from the stick to the other stick on your controller. You get really precise control, so there's almost no slop here and all motions are transmitted to the controller stick over here. Am I getting frosted? Should I? But here we are, it really works nicely. It's amazing what sort of difference this amount of precision does to your flying. See, a control stick on a gamepad, it seems like it's an XY analog control, but in reality, it's more like a directional control with only very small amount of freedom for how much that is deflected, which is not really great for flying. For flying, you need very small movements. Most of the time, what you're doing, you're doing very you know, 
subtle movement on the stick. In a real plane, you're really doing it with a few fingers like this, very lightly and gently. And it's only in very specific emergencies where you have to do the full deflection. But this works for that purpose very well. It's very precise, even in the middle, you can see the smallest movement with no slop or position issues. I think you should first just make this right half here, this joystick here, because you can do the throttle with your buttons here. When the throttle actually becomes interesting is for landings. So I'm gonna do a landing here on top of Mount Fuji. I think I'm gonna do it right there. So where's my flaps? Uh, I don't know the buttons for these flaps, so I have to find them here. Fuel tank, throttle, mixture, flaps please. Is that flaps? No. All the way down please, yes. Okay, my flaps are down. Let's go in for an approach. See, for landings, it's counterintuitive, but in an airplane, your pitch, so how far up your nose is, is what controls your forward speed. So you don't really point yourself down to go down. What you do is you reduce your throttle, and then you start sinking. And your nose up and down is what controls your speed rather than your descent. So for landing, you want to keep your nose in a certain position that gives you a good speed that's above your stall speed and adjust your throttle slowly so you sink and in the last moment you flare up so that you reduce your speed even further that allows you to stall just before hitting the ground and hitting it gently like this so you want to keep your stall speed where's my brakes oh no don't fall in the crater please if you haven't been to Mount Fuji, the most impressive thing about this mountain is, is that it's in the middle of, you know, a plane. Not an airplane, but a, an area of planes, you know? So as you can see, bush landings like this, and landings in general in small airplanes is where having an analog, precise throttle and an analog joystick really shines. So why don't you try and make one for yourself? They're super easy to make and you can just snap them onto your Xbox controller like this. Get a little taste of what it's like to fly with a hot ass controller. If you like one better, why don't you make one of these? This is my USB enabled controller. It's a joystick with magnetic sensors and an Arduino board inside. It's a bit more difficult to make because you have to solder and everything. So step one and step two perhaps. This is designed for an Xbox controller because I know this game is out on an Xbox. What controller do you use to play games on your PC? I of course use the superior controller, the Switch Pro controller. But I think some people are using their PlayStation ones or... If there are quite many people who are using, you know, DualShocks or their Switch Pro controllers to play this game, I might be able to make a version of this for that, you know, it's the same mechanism, you just need to redesign this mount. The way I designed this hot as was in my favorite CAD software, which is Fusion 360. It's really cool because you can simulate how all these mechanical parts will go together. I'm kidding, of course. The ball joints in Fusion are horrible and they don't work at all. So what I did is made a copious amount of prototypes and just figure it out as I went with rapid prototyping. In fact, the hardest part about this whole thing was to make the mount for the Xbox controller. See, this Xbox controller is a very organic round shape and it's not very easy to measure how many millimeters you need to make each angle, you know? So what I thought I'd do is go online and find a 3D model of this. Surely someone must have made one or 
even Microsoft might have released a 3D model of their controller. Well, you could find a few different ones, including this one, which is like $50 just to download it. I acquired all the free ones I could find, and, and very concerningly, none of them really agreed with each other. So they're all different shapes. Uh, some of them are even different sh sizes. See, in CAD, what you imagine you could do is take the shape of the controller as data and then flow this mounting material around it and then subtract that controller data from the mounting material and you, sh you should have a negative image. But no, uh, these kind of look the same. I mean, I mean, apart from this one being a mirror image of the real thing. Look at the buttons, they're on the wrong side. So after a lot of prototyping, what I did is just made a wild guess and then iterated from there. So actually this would have been faster without that 3D data to begin with. Go find the files, go find your local library or a friend with a 3D printer and print one out. If you have any questions, why don't you leave a comment and check out the 3D files should be in the text description. If you'd be so kind, please subscribe and maybe I'll make more videos of 3D printed game controllers and some puzzles and, you know, electronics projects. Thank you very much for watching.